Hello and welcome to part seven of the Ontario Hazelnut IPM workshop series for 2021, Insects to Watch Out For. My name is Melanie Filitas and I am a Horticulture Integrated Pest Management Specialist with the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. Throughout this series, we'll be discussing a number of pest species common to Ontario hazelnut orchards. For general information on hazelnut scouting and where you can find additional information, refer to part one of this webinar series, Introduction to Hazelnut IPM. In the previous presentations in this webinar series, we have focused on a number of disease and insect pests which are known to be causing problems in Ontario hazelnuts. The current presentation will be focusing on three additional insect pests, hazelnut weevil, filbert worm, and brown marmorated stink bugs, which are not currently causing damage to Ontario hazelnuts, but have been known to cause significant damage in other growing regions. Because these insects are present in Ontario and just not significantly in orchards, we know that they do have the potential to cause damage. So we need to be watching out for them, especially as Ontario hazelnut acreage increases. All three of these pests are direct insect pests in that they damage the hazelnuts themselves, causing holes or other damage, and therefore have the potential to have significant economic impact on this crop. As was discussed in the previous presentations on insect pests in this webinar series, this diagram shows the activity of various insect pests in Ontario hazelnuts throughout the growing season. At the bottom of this figure, we show the three potential pests we will be discussing in this presentation and their expected activities, with the green bars showing when peak activity is expected to occur and the blue bars occurring, showing when they may occur in some years. However, since we have not seen significant populations of these insects in Ontario so far, this information is based mostly on other growing regions and the information may change as we gain more experience with these pests in Ontario. The first pest on our watch list is a caterpillar called the filbert worm. This is a very serious insect pest of hazelnuts in several growing regions and certainly warrants control measures there, particularly in the Pacific Northwest. Filbert worm produces larvae which bore into wild acorns and hazelnuts, causing significant damage to the interior of the nut. Though it is a serious pest in Oregon, for now it appears to be mainly restricted to wild acorns in Ontario and Quebec. So it's definitely present in the wild and we have placed traps in commercial hazelnuts in Ontario and we have detected it. We first found an adult filbert worm in one of those traps in Western Ontario in August 2015 and we had subsequent finds and traps over the next few years in Western Ontario and also in the Niagara region. So it's definitely present in commercial hazelnuts in Ontario to some degree. However, so far we have not seen any significant damage to the nuts, either in the orchards where we were doing trapping or in other orchards. Just a brief overview of the life cycle, filbert worms overwinter as larvae within the soil which pupate in the spring and emerge from the soil as adults starting in late June and continuing all the way through to October. The adult moths lay eggs near developing nut clusters and when the larvae hatch, they feed on the husks until they find a softened area that will allow them to enter the interior of the nut. So you can see that sort of shallow feeding towards a hole in the, up, in the lower right figure in, in this slide. Once they burrow into the interior of the nut, they spend the next several weeks feeding on the kernel, effectively destroying it and filling it with frass, which renders it unmarketable. After several weeks, they emerge from the nut, create a hole, and then drop to the ground where they overwinter as a cocoon in the soil, organic debris, or on cracks in the trees. So some quick identification for this insect. The adults can be fairly variable in color, ranging from tan to dark brown to rusty, but they can be identified by the two to three metallic bands, which run horizontally across their wingspan. And that wingspan is about 1.5 to two centimeters across. You often won't see these flying throughout the orchard, but you can trap them with pheromones, which I will be discussing in the next slide. During the summer, you can crack the nuts open to check for larvae, which are about one and a half centimeters long and are white to pinkish with a dark yellow brown head. The area just behind the head is brown with darkish modeling. Adult filbert worms can be monitored with commercially available pheromone traps, and some of these traps are available from Canadian suppliers. These should be placed in the upper third of the canopy, and they should be out by early June. 
In the Pacific Northwest, the thresholds they've established for sprays are an average of two to three moths caught per trap or finding five moths in a single trap. So that would trigger uh, a control. However, we don't know if that threshold is applicable here. As I've mentioned, we have trapped them in Ontario hazelnut orchards, but not to any significant degree, and we have not yet observed significant damage to the nuts. So if we do start to see damage, it's gonna take some trial and error to know what threshold would be needed in Ontario. For now though, the pheromones can be helpful in indicating if you even have filbert worm flying through your orchards, especially if you start to notice nuts with holes from past harvests, as it can be difficult to distinguish filbert worm damage from that of other hazelnut pests. All right, the next insect pest on our watch list are hazelnut weevils. So hazelnut weevils belong to a group of beetle species called Curculio, it's actually a genus, and many of the weevils attacking other Ontario tree fruit crops also belong to this group. There are a number of specific Curculio that will attack hazelnuts and the exact species varies with the growing region. So there is one species occurring in Europe and that is reported to be a major pest that definitely requires control. However, the species that is reported in Oregon and Washington is different, and it's much less common in commercial orchards with really sporadic damage that doesn't often require control. So we don't know exactly what species we'll be dealing with in commercial orchards in Ontario, but in Eastern North America, the weevil species most commonly associated with wild hazelnuts is Curculio obtusis. So this is quite commonly found infesting wild hazelnuts and its relatives in Eastern North American forests, but so far it's fairly rare in commercial orchards. Its life cycle is somewhat similar to filbert worm. It overwinters in the soil, but unlike filbert worm, it is overwintering as an adult rather than a larvae. The adults emerge in spring. They fly to nearby hosts where they'll feed briefly and mate on the immature developing nuts. But then eventually uh, the females will excavate a chamber where they lay their eggs and the eggs hatch out into larvae a couple of weeks later and those larvae will burrow into the nut and then feed on the kernel which basically destroys it and leaves the nuts full of rot and frass as you can see in that upper left photo. When the larvae mature, they will chew and exit hole in the nut in late August or early September. And you can see an example of that round hole in a, an acorn in the lower photo. And they'll drop to the ground to overwinter. They will also burrow in the soil uh, where they will sometimes enter into a state of dormancy and they can actually stay in the soil for up to three years before they emerge as adults. So again, we don't really know what to expect in terms of damage to Ontario hazelnut orchards, but it is important to be aware that Curculio species are present in the Ontario landscape and they're damaging wild hosts. I also want to just close this slide by pointing out some of the key features of the adult in the right photo here. So they are fairly brown to orangish, kind of a drab color, but they have a very long, thin, curved snout and a pair of bent antennae will be emerging from the snout. And that long thin snout is, is somewhat distinct for beetles that are in hazelnut and will help you distinguish it from other species or weevils that you might find in hazelnut orchards. These are photos from Oregon and the upper left shows exit holes caused by filbert worm and filbert weevil. And as you can see, they are quite difficult to distinguish from one another. They just look like round holes in the nuts. So if you do not encounter the damage until harvest, if you haven't been scouting your orchard and the larvae have already left the nut, then it's going to be very difficult to tell what caused the damage just based on an empty shell with a hole. So if you have large numbers of nuts with holes one year, that would suggest the need for more detailed scouting the following year. Based on what we've seen in Oregon, filbert worm is most likely to be the cause of damage in commercial orchards or more likely than weevils. However, we are dealing with a different species in Ontario uh, for weevils. So we don't know if that's going to be the same here. So it's important to be scouting the orchard throughout the season to look for presence of these pests while they are actually active. Earlier in the season, you can examine developing nut clusters for signs of feeding by the adult weevils or for any young filbert worm that ha may have hatched and are doing their initial feeding on the surface of the nut before they bore into it. You're not likely to see the filbert worm adults, but you can monitor for them with pheromone traps. So you can look for signs of weevil egg laying scars or, or 
holes from burrowing in uh, beginning uh, in this late spring or early summer. Uh, and you want to concentrate on orchard edges, especially near wild hosts, which is likely where these pests would be migrating into hazelnut orchards. If you do see any signs of damage on the nuts or any holes, it's a good idea to crack them open the nuts to try to catch the culprit in the act, so to speak. So the picture on the upper right shows filbert worm in the center and filbert weevil on the sides. They are both sort of a whitish color, but they can be distinguished from one another because weevil larvae tend to be more grub-like. So that means they're cream colored, they're C-shaped often, and they don't have legs, but they do have a distinct really hard head capsule. In contrast, the filbert worm larvae are more of your typical caterpillars and they do have a slightly darker body color, but they have three pairs of legs on the first three body segments. And then they have these freshy, fleshy pro legs running along their abdomen. And the presence of those legs can help you to distinguish filbert worm from filbert weevil. So we've just discussed the two traditional pests of hazelnuts from other growing regions, but now we're going to talk about a fairly new pest for hazelnuts, and that's the brown marmorated stink bug. Unlike in other fruit crops, stink bugs have historically not been an issue for Ontario hazelnuts just because the shells are too hard for their beaks to penetrate. However, we do have a new invasive stink bug, which is a significant concern for agricultural crops in general in Ontario, but for hazelnuts in particular. The brown marmorated stink bug, also known as BMSB, was introduced to North America from Asia several years ago, and it has since become a very significant pest of many crops throughout the northeastern US, and it has invaded Ontario and is established and spreading throughout the landscape. This poster comes from a website called stopbmsb.org, which is a really good site for getting more information on this pest. So this is showing the crops at risk from barmarmorated stink bug to varying degrees based on their host preference. And the first thing to note is that it is an extremely wide range of hosts, ranging from landscape plants to forestry to crops. So this allows it to be very successful because it's able to move throughout the season and always find something to eat which is the problem because these bugs eat practically anything. They love hitchhiking to new places and they're difficult to get rid of because they have escaped their natural predators. So what you can see if you look closely is that hazelnuts are on the list of high risk plants for damage from this insect. Brown marmorated stink bug invaded European hazelnuts a few years ago and caused very extensive damage to commercial orchards in some European countries, including Turkey and the Republic of Georgia. In the US, they've seen sporadic but occasionally significant damage in New Jersey hazelnuts, and they've seen increasing damage in Oregon, and they're certainly quite concerned about it there. In Ontario, we have trapped brown marmorated stink bug and hazelnuts in the Niagara region, but to date we have not observed any breeding populations in or immediately surrounding the orchards, and we haven't observed any damage to the nuts. So as far as we know, it is not currently a significant pest of hazelnuts in Ontario, but based on the history of damage from other countries and the fact that the insect is established in the landscape in Ontario, it is important to be aware of what the insect looks like and the kinds of damage it can cause to hazelnuts, because you may not see that damage until you crack the nut after harvest, and it can be difficult to link the damage you see back to the insect. It's important to be familiar with the characteristics of brown marmorated stink bug because it can be mistaken for some of the native stink bugs present in Ontario orchards. BMSB is a very large insect and both the adults and the nymphs have very distinctive white bands on the antennae as well as some banding on the legs and that leg banding is a little bit more distinct on the adults than on the nymphs. Both of them have a shield shaped body that is kind of a mottled brownish gray in color. Uh, and that color is similar to some of the native stink bugs that you might find in Ontario orchards. However, you can distinguish them or one way to distinguish them is by the shoulders. The shoulders of the native stink bugs can be jagged, but the BMSB shoulder has this sort of rounded tip you can see here, which helps to distinguish it from other native stink bugs. 
they also have a black and white pattern around their abdomen, which kind of looks like inward pointing white triangles. But what is really notable about this insect is if you flip it over, you can see just how long their feeding apparatus is. So looking in the rightmost photo, you can see that it is very hard and strong and almost half the length of the body. And this is why the insect is such a problem for hazelnuts. It's because this feeding apparatus is strong enough to pierce through the hard, thick tissue, such as the shell of a hazelnut. So unlike some of the native stink bug pests, which have a less strong feeding apparatus, It'll, it, that can pierce through things like apples but cannot penetrate hazelnuts. In the case of BMSB, having a hard shell does not protect you from attack. So this slide shows some of the immature stages of brown marmorated stink bug. The newly hatched nymphs, you can see on the lower left, tend to remain near their egg sacs and they have a really bright orange abdomen with dark marks. This is actually somewhat similar to other beneficial stink bugs that we do see in hazelnuts. Uh, if you see on the right, you are some examples of predatory stink bugs that we can sometimes find on hazelnuts feeding on caterpillars and other pests. Uh, and you can see that they are also sort of brightly colored. However, as the brown marmorated stink bug develops, the older nymphs become more distinctive and they start to develop the distinct banding on the legs and antennae uh, as they get a little bit older. And you can see it going from left to right here on the upper part of the slide. And that allows you to distinguish them from the predatory species and other pest species that might be present in Ontario. Unfortunately for hazelnuts, BMSB damage is quite difficult to detect externally, and you may only notice it once you have cracked that nut open after harvest. The damage to the nut also can vary depending on the stage of nut development when BMSB was feeding on it. So the upper left photo shows an undamaged nut for comparison to the others. The upper right photo shows a nut that was fed on during shell expansion. So this feeding often halts development of the kernel and results in blanks, but blanks can also be caused by poor irrigation or other fertilization issues with hazelnuts. So if you don't know that the MSB is active in your orchard, you may not be aware that you are actually dealing with stink bug damage and you might attribute it to some other cause. The lower left photo shows an example of stink bug damage occurring during kernel expansion. So once the kernel has formed but is not fully developed, often this causes shriveling or malformation of the nuts. Um, and then at uh, more mature nuts, mature kernels uh, feeding at that time causes sort of corking damage, as you can see in the lower right photo. This slide shows the results of a study done by the University of Guelph where they purposely caged a number of brown barmerated stink bugs on hazelnuts uh, later in the season and then closer to harvest. And what you can see again is that feeding at that time causes varying degrees of generalized browning. Uh, so if you aren't aware that BMSB is active in your orchard and you saw this on the kernels, you might attribute this to some general decay or rot when in fact it is the result of stink bug damage. In some cases, such as in the upper right photo, you can see little pinpricks where the stink bug feeding apparatus pierced the nut, but that's less obvious uh, when you have more significant damage. A little bit about life cycle. The brown marmorated stink bug overwinters as adults in protected areas. They become active in the spring. And in hazelnuts and other growing regions, feeding damage appears to occur throughout the growing season. We don't know whether that would occur in Ontario as well. A reminder though, that that feeding damage uh, can vary with the nut stage that is present while they are feeding. Um, but breeding populations have not been found in Ontario to date. However, it is a good idea to be keeping an eye out for this insect based on the problems that they've seen in other growing regions. In terms of monitoring, there are no real established techniques for looking for BMSB. It is important to notice the presence of any stink buds during your regular scouting for other pests, but make sure you grab them and confirm 
the identification because there are a large number of predatory stink bugs that are quite present in Ontario hazelnut orchards and those are beneficial and play a very important role in controlling caterpillars and other pests. So you don't want to be thinking that you have BMSB and need to control it when in fact it's a beneficial stink bug that you do want to have in your orchard. There are some pheromone traps that are commercially available that you can use if you are interested in looking for it or sus you suspect you have it in your orchard. These should be placed out towards the perimeter of the orchard as brown marmorated stink bugs often move in from other crops and landscape plants. Uh, so usually populations would start there. If you do find it, there are no established thresholds for BMSB in Ontario, so really Finding it is just giving you an indication that they are moving into your orchard and that you need to start looking for damage in the harvested nuts. Controlling BMSB can be a real challenge. In hazelnuts, based on what we know so far in Ontario, we suspect that BMSB will be more of a concern during hot dry summers when alternate food sources might be scarce. Right now, there are a lot of other landscape plants in Ontario that seem to keep, be keeping BMSB busy, and that's probably what's keeping them out of hazelnuts. But orchards that are near monocultures or a large number of other high-risk crops, such as apples and tender fruits, may be more at risk. Uh, hazelnuts also that are located in trade corridors, such as those in the Ni Niagara region or other areas where there are a lot of goods being moved across the border, could be at risk because BMSB is a really good hitchhiker and it can come in on lumber or other material moving in from infested regions elsewhere. For cultural control, keeping weeds, uh, weedy areas in and around the orchard mowed, especially weeds like blackberry, mustard, and radish, can help remove other crops that might be attractive to BMSB. There's also a number of predators and parasitoids that will attack certain life stages of BMSB. The really good news is that there's been quite a lot of research done on egg parasitoids and others from native regions where BMSB originated. And those have been brought in to develop biological control programs in the United States and they're seeing some success. So that's really good news because at present, there are no products registered to control BMSB in hazelnuts. Um, and there's actually really no good chemistry even in other crops that really works really well against BMSB. So we're hoping that some of those biological controls will prove to be successful in keeping this insect under control. That brings us to the end of our presentation on pests to watch out for. Just a reminder of the other hazelnut related resources that are now available or soon to be available on the OMAFRA website at www.ontario.ca slash crops. So with that, I'd like to thank you for listening. My contact information is posted on this slide should you need to reach out with questions or comments. And I would also encourage you to subscribe to our blog at onspecialtycrops.ca, which provides timely information on specialty crops, including hazelnuts in Ontario.